I was born in Paris, as you can hear, and uh, I've been traveling a lot since, because uh, uh, for most of my career, I've been working all around the world, in, uh, in Africa, in Middle East, in Southeast Asia, a uh, little bit of work in South America as well. Uh, but when I discovered uh, Australia 14 years ago, uh, I thought that it was a place for me to stay and a place to work. I'm the research director of the Smart Infrastructure Facility at the University of Wollongong. My role is mainly to coordinate nowadays the research we're doing. Most of the time we're working on very complex issues, which means that we're dealing with complex relationship between evidence, data, analytics, modeling eventually, and then visualization and communication of results. So it's, it's an old chain of, of knowledge creation and knowledge sharing. And my role is to find the right people for the right job. My role is to make sure that we deliver on time. And my role is to make sure that everybody has fun doing it. I should not say that, but when I was at school, I was really bad at math. Um, and there's this concept that you have to be a, a very deep mathematician to use complex models. Actually not. You have to be very intuitive. Very often, it's more about art than science. So I would probably suggest to any student who wants to try simulation to try it regardless of the background. When I was in another university before coming to Wollongong, I had a course set up for anthropologists, information science students, also students from environmental studies. I think this is the way I became a modeler, uh, doing mainly uh, social simulation. Uh, I was trained, believe it or not, as an engineer in agriculture a long time ago. Uh, but when I started to create models to understand better how crops were reacting to climate, for example, uh, I understood uh, very quickly that I needed to put the farmer in the model. And then, if I wanted to put the farmer in the model, I need to understand a bit better the farmer himself or herself. And so I had to go there. And, and if I was not able to dialogue directly with a farmer in Africa or in Indonesia, I needed sociologists, anthropologists to help me to understand and to translate this into my model. So again, if I don't have this contact with the reality, with the people we try to model, we're just creating video games. If I look at my career and if I'm asked what was the best asset ever uh, I had the chance uh, to rely upon, it was the fact that very young in my career I was able to go abroad, Western Africa first and then Middle East and then Southeast Asia. This is the only way you can look at the same social economic problems in different ways, in different contexts. Um, what's true for me has been true uh, for my kids. They've been expatriates all their life. It's not easy all the time, but again, when I look at them now as young adults, they've got this richness, they've got this open eye to any issues uh, they can face in their daily life. And what I hope for, for students at the University of Wollongong is that we have as many opportunities as possible to send them in the region. And God knows that we've got a very rich region between the Pacific and Southeast Asia. They're totally contrasted regions. And we need them to be associated with this richness as soon as possible in the curriculum. SMART is not only about simulation and modeling. SMART is probably even before that about data gathering and data analytics. Because we figured out very quickly in our short lifespan of four years that there was still a lot of data that exists. It's there, it's out there, but it's embedded into silos or it's owned by private or public entities. And it's our mandate at SMART to help free releasing this data for as many people as possible to use it. Because we know that data sharing is probably one of the best way to progress society, economically and socially. So we're putting a lot of efforts in having a team focusing only on data gathering and data analytics and data warehousing. And there is no secret. Uh, the garbage in, garbage out uh, uh, concept applies to any kind of modeling we're doing. So what, what we try to convince our, our partners about is the fact that the strengths of SMART relies of course on our people and our approaches, but most certainly as well 
on the quality of the data we're collecting and we're warehousing. And um, we start to be known in Australia uh, for, for, for this kind of good work. Smart is probably perceived by many people outside or even within the university as, as an engineering and information science kind, kind, kind of uh, ivory tower. We're not. Um, we already have a, a broad range of people ranging from myself, an old uh, engineer in agriculture, but also a philosopher uh, in urban systems, uh, people coming from business. And what I hope is that we're going to attract more and more of this diversity in order to create a new culture for research at SMART. SMART is developing fast and we, we attract now more and more people who spontaneously contact us and say, oh, what you're doing at SMART is fantastic, I'd like to join you. And of course, we would like to accept everyone, but we have a limited number of opportunities. So it's hard to try to select who are the right people for the job now, but more importantly for the job of the future. And because SMART is positioned at the interface between pure research within the university and the demand out there, there's some sort of a gamble for me and for the senior executives at SMART to make sure that we're betting on the right people. And there's mainly intuition involved in this kind of, of selection process and, and honestly I think that communication skills, open-mindedness are the main qualities I'm searching for our, our young researchers and students joining SMART.